Can you hear anything? That is silent photography mode. What is it? What are the advantages of using silent photography in wildlife photography? What are the disadvantages? Should you use it? Shouldn't you use it? Stick around, let's find out. Today we're going to talk about silent photography. Should you use it? Should you not use it? What are the pros and cons of using silent photography? Now there is a caveat to this video and that is that I'm using the Nikon Z62 and the Nikon 200 to 500 mm for this example. If you're using another lens then you might have a different result. All my examples are based on my gear. The Z62 with the 200 to 500, which is a great bit of gear that doesn't cost too much money in today's world for wildlife photography. In the last couple of months, I've been using silent photography more and more. And these days, I use it nearly 90% of the time. Why? Because I find that it is the mode that helps me get the best shots. Now, not only do I use silent photography mode, but I also use the continuous high extended mode and both of these modes together gives me about eight frames per second if i was using just continuous high would give me around five five and a half frames per second and i found the average is just under five frames per second and the reason why i like using continuous high extended is that in low continuous or high continuous we get a slight amount of blackout like a millisecond but it's still very annoying when you're tracking birds but if you're using continuous high extended with silent photography mode you don't get any blackout you're seeing the bird has your panning so there's no delay very easy to track before i show you some samples of when i'm using silent photography and some of the pitfalls of using silent photography because there is some downfalls of using silent photography Let's dive into the menu and I'll show you all about silent photography mode. We go into the eye menu, you can see that silent photography is off. So I go back into the menu and you can see that flash compensation is enabled, flash mode is enabled, flicker reduction can be enabled as well. Now if I go in to silent photography and switch it on like so, go into the menu again, can you see that flicker reduction is greyed out? Flash control is greyed out. Flash compensation is also greyed out. If we come down to the shooting mode over here and we go down to D5 shutter type, you can see that this is greyed out. Because we are in a silent photography mode, you cannot choose your shutter type. Now watch what happens if I go out of silent photography mode. I have to go back into the eye menu, switch silent photography off like so. Now we go back into the menu to shooting display, come down to the shutter type D5 and you can see we can choose auto, mechanical or electronic front curtain shutter. This is if you are not in silent photography mode. Now as you saw in the menu you can choose three types of shutter modes, auto, mechanical or front curtain. But there is a fourth and that is silent photography mode. Let me show you now the differences between these four and this is where a lot of people get confused. They think that silent photography mode is electronic front curtain but it is not because if you're using the electronic front curtain mode you are limited to one two thousandth of a second. You cannot go higher than one two thousandth second. But in the silent photography mode, you can go as high as you want. Did you also see that in the menu, you cannot use the flash or the flicker reduction? So there are some drawbacks. But for me, I don't use flash photography when I'm photographing birds. And I don't put myself into a situation where I would need flash. Because the 200 to 500 being limited to f5.6, as soon as you get into a dark area, you're really struggling and I would have to push the ISO way higher than I would be comfortable in. I mean higher than ISO 10,000. Now let's take a look at the four different shutter modes. So this is the first one, auto shutter. And the camera automatically chooses between electronic front curtain and mechanical shutter depending on your shooting condition. The next one is mechanical shutter. The camera always uses the mechanical shutter at the beginning 
and at the end of every image. The third one is electronic first curtain shutter. The camera does not perform a shutter action at the beginning of the photo. At the end of the exposure, the mechanical shutter is used to stop the data collection. The one drawback of electronic first curtain shutter is that it is limited of one two thousandths of a second. Silent photography shutter. When this is set to on, the camera does not use the mechanical shutter, nor does it use the electronic first curtain shutter. And this is where people get confused because they think that the silent photography mode is either electronic front curtain shutter or a mixture between the two. But as you can see, there is no sound at all in silent photography mode. There are limitations like I stated, but this is why I like using silent photography mode. Now let me show you some samples of some birds taken in silent photography mode. And also pay careful attention of where the focus is taken because sometimes you will see that the photos are stated that I had so many out of focus, but look carefully because sometimes I'm just a bit slow to react. So all these were taken in silent photography mode. The shutter type is continuous high extended. Now this first set is of a little egret. 11 photos, 11 in focus. Now this next one here are uh, black cormorants flying across the sky. This was taken much later in the afternoon. You might wonder why they're not out of focus, but because they were so far away, the camera was close to infinity. This next one here is of an eastern egret just flying across the sky. Now here the square is much bigger because I'm in DX crop mode because the cormorant is a little bit further away. I'm trying to get it closer in by using DX mode. This next one are some egrets. I've got 10 photos at eight frames per second. Pay attention to where the focus square is because they move so quickly and it was all over and done with so quickly that some of the photos at the end were out of focus because the egret that I'd focused on had moved out of the focus square and I wasn't quick enough to put the focus square back onto the bird. Now this last set are some royal spoonbills just feeding away. And this is the only time on that afternoon that the focus let me down. I don't know whether it was a camera or me, but sometimes I just take my finger off the back button focus and it just throws the camera out. So as soon as you repress it, it takes like a split second for the camera to lock back on, which allows the camera to go out of focus and to try to focus back again. You end up missing a few shots. where it just zoomed out and then zoomed back in again. Now this next set of Willy Wagtail photos show you how good it can get when I get my act together. And the Willy Wagtails here were just moving around on this log. I don't have the focus square on there because I deleted the raw files because they'd been converted to JPEG. I cannot show the focus square. Now this is a young one and he's going to fly towards the back of the log here because the parent is going to come back. You can see I was very quick able to move the focus square towards the back of the log so that I could keep getting these birds in focus. Let me show you in real time at eight frames per second. This is how quick the action happened. Now there are a few drawbacks to using silent photography mode. 
like I mentioned before, you cannot use the flash, but I don't use flash in my wildlife photography. And this video is all about wildlife photography. I'm not talking about using silent photography for landscape, for architecture, and the only major drawback that you can have sometimes using the silent photography mode is rolling shutter. Rolling shutter really you can see like in moving objects like in birds their wings might be wrong and sometimes the horizontal lines and the vertical lines in your image might look distorted from one image to another. This is only affecting you because when I post to social media I only post one photo. If I'm looking at let's say a hundred photos that I took of a willy wagtail and there is one or two images where the branch might look a bit skewed. I'm seeing that but my audience is not seeing that because even if I put the image that is skewed up on Facebook nobody's going to notice. Now to show you how reliable silent photography is I just went out in my backyard and I photographed these little superb fairy wrens here in my backyard and I took hundreds of photos. I think I ended up with nearly 900 photos and the statutes were in front of my shed. So you can see the shed has vertical lines behind it and you're going to see now 307 of these photos and none of these have got any issues at all and I'm very satisfied with that. So let's take a look at the 307 photos that I took to show you that silent photography works and works very well. And this is in real time. You can see the numbers on the top right hand corner. They're showing you how quickly these photos are being taken. The picture's moving slightly from left to right. That's just natural because it's just on a tripod and I'm trying to hold it as still as possible. Still mimicking how I would hold my camera and lens out when I'm actually photographing wildlife. Three hundred and seven photos, no errors. Now, in the nearly nine hundred photos I took, no errors. Now, this is just a sample. But last week, I went out to the lagoon and I took around six hundred photos. But all in short bursts. And this is why I decided to go out this morning and take hundreds of photos to see if I could display a rolling shutter error. And in all the photos that I took at the lagoon, none of them had a rolling shutter effect. Even the birds in flight, you couldn't see any errors in the, the wings of the birds. In the last couple of months I've used silent photography a lot and I've taken thousands of photos and in those thousands of photos I think I might have like four or five photos where I found a problem. That is such a minute amount of errors that I'm willing to sort of let it go saying well even if there is a small problem it's not going to be shown in any of my photos. This is why. I like using silent photography. Like I stated, this is all relevant to the Nikon C62 and the 200 to 500. I am pretty sure that if you've got the Sigma or the Tamron 150 to 600, you're going to have just as much success with silent photography as I have with the 200 to 500 Nikon. Now, if you've got any questions or any comments or feedback on silent photography, or if you tried silent photography and it's backfired on you, you've had problems. Please, I'd like to know. Leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. Stay safe, enjoy wildlife photography, and I'll see you next time.